Today I'm sharing rewarding minimalist habits that are game changers. Cluttering is an ongoing process. So every season I like to go through my home and go through each room and just make sure that we are not gathering too many items. And normally each season I can find at least one or two items that can be donated or that need to leave our home. Make mindful purchases. This can be harder than it seems, but I like to do a lot of research before I make a big purchase, and I try not to make those small purchases that can be made on impulse. Keep our surfaces as clear as possible. I found that clutter attracts more clutter, and if I can keep all of our kitchen counters clear, they stay that way, and it's so much easier to cook something. I try to clean and tidy throughout my day. Whenever I get an extra minute here and there, I just find it so much easier to clean as I go rather than save everything to a certain day or time, and these tasks are much quicker if they're done throughout the day. And that brings me to the one minute rule. If there's a task that can be done in one minute or less, it's easier just to do that right away than to save it and have to remember to come back to it at a later time. I try to be grateful and mindful for everything I do have for my family and for all the items that we do keep and enjoy. And it can be hard sometimes to not want the newest, latest, greatest thing but it feels better to use what we have because it is better for the environment and then we're not having to spend our whole lives working just to buy things. Clear the clutter is what I like to say. So as soon as I am ready to declutter something, I try to get rid of it as quickly as possible. For instance, when we decided we did not need this Ikea bed anymore, I sold it on Facebook Marketplace. I have a whole video on this I can link down below. It was actually pretty funny, but we took the bed apart as soon as we knew we didn't need it and we tried to find someone who could use it and we did come across a few challenges as you can see here we throw it out the window we got a problem here this is fun yeah, so this is the conundrum we're in Oy. wall 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 maybe it's in my purse oh I'll go good thing you have a little elf helper <laughs> when simple things become difficult <laughs> In the end, we were able to turn the bed on its side and we were able to get it out of the hallway. But our second problem happened where the guy did not show up to pick up the bed for a day. So again, it's not always easy to clear the clutter, but I try my best to get it out as quickly as possible. Not only create space by decluttering all the items you don't need, which I have a full decluttering ebook that I will link down below in case you're interested, but also try to embrace the space. So sometimes open spaces can feel kind of weird. We wanna fill it up. But now that I am used to open areas in my home and clear surfaces, I actually feel way more calm and relaxed. Another great habit is to try to get comfortable saying no, saying no thank you to things that people offer you. This was actually quite hard for me because I always said, sure, I'll take that whenever something was offered. And that is actually what added to a lot of the clutter that ended up being in our home. It wasn't things that I bought myself. A lot of it was stuff that was handed down to us and that we did not really need. That bedroom there. Oh, I think I made it. those. You did, you made it by hand. You want them back? No? No. Buy quality items over quantity. I feel this really works when you're buying clothing items to invest in a nice shirt or a nice pair of pants. I find it will last years rather than buying cheap things that have to be replaced really quickly. And this also works in our kitchen when it comes to appliances. We splurged on a Ninja blender and it is still working and we use it several times a day and it's still going strong after about four years. Another great habit to adopt is to become more environmentally friendly. And with that, we like to reuse, repurpose, and resell any items we can. For instance, when I redid my pantry here, I just used some containers we already had in our house, so I did not have to go out and buy anything new. This not only saves the environment, but it also saves money. 
Creating a budget will help you to stay minimal because you will realize that you don't want to spend your money on things that you don't really need. So we try to meal plan and that's another way to save some money with budgeting. And here we're making our own sushi rolls because where we live, they're quite expensive. And it's also a fun activity, but definitely budgeting is a great minimalist habit to adopt. And you can start right now by figuring out what you have to spend and what you want to save. Using what you have is a great minimalist habit to adopt if you haven't already. So for instance, when we realized we were going to have to homeschool and do distance learning, I just pulled out our old computer and got it working and used our old desk, everything we already had. Pack lightly when you travel, even in your everyday travels to the store. I always try to bring the least amount of things possible and only bring the necessities with us. And especially when we go on a trip, I try to bring very few items because I find it to be more of a burden. And most of the time we don't even need these extra things that we bring. To create a capsule wardrobe or adopt a minimalist wardrobe, just try to whittle down what you have. And I can tell you firsthand, this is what made me feel the most minimalist and simplified my life the most out of every single thing that I did. I go over this in my mini course that again, I have linked down below, but this is so simple to achieve and just going through and really knowing what you have can save you a lot of time and money in the long run because you won't be making duplicate purchases of clothing items that you didn't even know you had in the back of a drawer. And it will also help with knowing what outfits go together, which will give you more time when you're trying to get ready in the morning or wherever you need to go in the day. Drive less often, and I know this is not always possible, but I try to combine trips. So for instance, if I need something from the grocery store and I also need to get gas, I will do that in one outing if possible, and this saves time and money. Try to collect memories and not things. Since becoming more minimal, I try to focus on doing fun things with my family rather than going out and spending money on buying things or feeling as if we have to pay to do something. I just try to collect all these memories and have a really fun time without worrying about gathering more stuff. Stand by your choices. So if you want to be minimal and declutter, don't let anything anybody tells you hold you back. When I first started decluttering and becoming more minimal and talking about wanting to have less and wanting to save money by not buying anything and become more environmentally friendly and switch things out, I did get a few comments from people online in real life saying that's kind of weird and they just did not understand it. But that's okay. Just be true to yourself and stand by your choices that you want to make and do what is good for you in the long run. Be okay with not being busy all the time. It's one thing to try to have a productive day, but I found it's another thing to really cram too many things in one day to where I feel stressed out. So I try to be okay without being busy constantly. And this brings me to the more I declutter, the more I am a conscious consumer. That's kind of hard to say, but the more things I see myself decluttering and helping other people declutter, I realize that I really want to be conscious of where I'm getting my items from and to make sure they're high quality and I'm not just going to turn around and declutter them right away. Also only keep things that I truly love in my home and I avoid impulse buys. And the quickest and easiest way to avoid impulse buys is to to stop shopping unless you really, really need something. So I normally only go out shopping when we need to buy food and I only shop online when we really need to replace something. I follow the one in one out policy, which helps to keep us minimal and keep our lives simple. When we decided to become minimalist, we also decided to start eating a lot healthier, trying to eat whole natural foods and less processed things. And we tried to make 
make all of our meals at home because it is much healthier to eat at home than it is to go out and eat. And we've seen so many benefits from that. And we also simplify food. So we try to make meals where we have leftovers for the next day, or we make a large meal that can be split into two. So we're not having to do a ton of work each day. Gone are the days when I usually have big decluttering before and after projects. I just found that was easier in the beginning stages of decluttering. Now I find it much easier to take something out of a drawer as soon as I know it doesn't fit anymore. As soon as I've read a book, I put it straight into the pile to go back to the little library. So getting rid of things as quickly as I don't need them anymore is great to keep your home feeling minimal and clutter free. So back when we first became minimalist, I felt that being minimal meant my home had to always be clean. And sometimes I would obsessively put things away and clean things. And now I have really settled in to this lifestyle and realized that that really has nothing to do with being minimal. And for me, minimalism is more about making my day work for me and making my life easier and simplifying. So there was no need to continually clean my house when it was already pretty tidy or pretty clean. I now have come up with a routine where I clean as I go through my day. I clean as I see a area needing to be cleaned. So obviously if my floors are looking a little messy, that's when I will clean them. I have gone away from having a very strict schedule and I've become way more relaxed. And that is just my own personal decision, but it has really helped for me to relax and accept the fact that being minimal doesn't mean your home is always tidy, but it means that it's easily tidied and everything has a home and a place to go. So it is very easy to put things away and tidy up when we need to. Limit the amount of toys and kids stuff to their bedroom. So everything that has to do with kids, clothing, toys, uh, books, everything has to fit in their bedroom. And by making this limit, it has made it very easy for me to deny certain purchases because I simply say that is not going to fit into their bedroom and we don't have a playroom, we don't have any extra space to put things like that and I refuse to have it in my living room. So by making that limit, we have set a bar where we stop at a certain point. And this has simplified my life so much because I know whenever we're looking for something for the kids, I can go in their bedroom, it's gonna be there in their bedroom put away and I don't have to search in all different places looking for things. And it has also just helped by making that limit it's helped us to stay minimal and clutter free. And it really makes us think, where are we gonna put that item before we purchase it? And will it fit into the children's bedroom? I guess this rule can apply to people that don't have kids because you can set limits for almost anything in your home. But what this does is it naturally keeps you clutter free and more minimal because once you set that limit and you're not gonna go over it, then you know you're not gonna be bringing any more things into your home. Batch work as many things as I can in my life. And what I mean by that is when I'm gonna go to the store and do some shopping, I make one giant list and I try to go to as many places as I can in that one outing. And I can apply this to a lot of different things in my life. So for instance, if I'm going to clean one bathroom, get out all those cleaning supplies, I might as well clean the other bathroom because a lot of time is eaten up in the starting and the stopping process and the getting ready process. And my husband being a finished carpenter talks about this. The majority of the work is getting all set up to start the project. So for instance, whenever I'm filming these videos or editing them, that's a hobby that I've started since becoming more minimal and getting more time. I try to batch all of that work. So I'll edit as much as I can in one sitting. I'll film as much as I can in one sitting. And it just makes my life so much easier and gives me so much more time. 
And of course, the whole reason why we became minimalist is so we can simplify all the tasks that we don't really like to do so we can focus on having more fun, being silly, and really enjoying our lives and our children while they're young. I try to stay on top of the dishes as much as possible. As soon as we are done eating a meal, I try to clear off the table and wash the dishes, completely dry them if possible and put them away if I have the time. This makes it so much easier when I come back for the next meal that needs to be made. And it also feels so much better when I'm looking around my house and I don't see all of the visual clutter. I have been trying to find the joy in daily tasks that maybe seem like work to some people, but if I can think of it as making our lives actually easier by tidying things up, putting things away, and making my home visually appealing to myself and my family, I feel I can find joy in these somewhat mundane tasks of, of putting cords away and straightening up blankets, putting extra blankets away that have been dragged out by my kids. And just by thinking of this differently rather than work and thinking of it as making my home enjoyable and beautiful, I can actually find joy in a lot of these everyday tasks. I also like to reevaluate how things are working and make sure that these systems that I have set up are actually working for our family as well. For instance, I used to do laundry every single day, about one load per day of the week, and that was just really a never ending process for me. So I decided to switch it to trying to do all the laundry on one day of the week. And I personally prefer this so much better than having to do it every single day. So reevaluating systems that are set up will also help. And I think that this leads to habits that are more enjoyable than habits that are just a task that you dread. I also try to be on my own timeline when it comes to seasons and decor and not on the timeline that is marketed to us. When it comes to organizing our house, I've started to store similar things together. So this can apply to almost every room in our home and probably your home as well, and it makes life a lot easier. So I've put all of the kids' crafting stuff in one area. I've put all of the baking stuff in the kitchen in one area instead of having it spread out throughout the kitchen. And this applies to blankets, towels, almost everything in our home. And this habit helps me to put things away faster and to find things way faster. Another way I've simplified is the things that I don't use very often, especially in the kitchen, I've put to the back of the cabinet. We've recently added some new countertops and cabinets in our kitchen, and there's this dead space in the corner, and I decided that that is where I would put all of our party supplies since we only get those out when we are having a birthday party or people over, which is not that often. So it's a perfect place to store things that I just don't need to get to all the time. By putting that stuff to the back, it helps free up the space in the front and makes it way quicker and easier to get to the things that I use daily. When it comes to caring for clothes, I will only buy clothing that is easy to maintain and take care of. I don't buy anything that usually needs to be ironed. I don't buy anything that needs to be dry cleaned. I just feel I don't wanna deal with those extra steps. And I know that might not be for everyone, but it has helped me to simplify washing my clothes and taking care of my clothes, reorganize any areas that are not working. I first moved in here and put everything in what I thought was the best organized manner in our kitchen, in my office, in the bathrooms. But over time, sometimes it is good to revisit these areas and see what needs to be updated, what needs to be changed, and this can help a lot with simplifying when you're getting ready in the morning or trying to cook something. So I've tried to log out of certain apps more often, for instance, Instagram. I am on there, but I try my hardest to log out for several days at a time. 
I also try not to check my emails constantly and this is not necessarily easy but if I can spend more time resting, relaxing, going outside, simplifying kind of what's happening in my head, that also is a great habit is just to check and see how much you're consuming and we really aren't meant to be consuming so much stuff so quickly and that's one way I've simplified which has helped me to relax more and has helped me to be more in my life and not in other people's lives seeing what they're doing constantly. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.